at some point you're going to be coding and you're going to get an error. Something is going to go wrong, you're going to try and run the program and something will happen. And you'll be presented with what at first instance looks like complete gobbledygook. You can't understand it, you don't know what it's actually saying, and you think to yourself, well this is useless, I, I have no idea what I'm going to do with this. But in actual fact, the errors in Pico8 are quite specific and they give you some good information on how to fix them. So what we've got here in front of us is a piece of code and it's going to generate some errors. On the outside it looks fine, but actually there are a few bits and pieces in it that are going to go wrong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it and I'm going to take you through how you might want to fix some of these errors and how to decode what the error message says. So the first thing I'm going to do is run this program and behold, I am confronted with an error. Now this might look quite disappointing when you first see it. You might think to yourself, I don't know quite what I'm going to do with this, but actually this is quite a useful little error message. To begin with, it gives us a line number here, line two. So it says there's something going on in line two. That could be useful. Tab naught, because obviously if your program's using tabs, you'd like to know where that is as well. So straight away, that gives us an idea of where it might be taking place. And if we go back into here and press escape, we can see that we're in tab zero here and line two. There's one, there's two. So we know there's something wrong with this line. So we're going to try and fix this. So let's go back to our error message and see what we get. So once we're into our error message like this, we know it's line two. We know, in fact, because it's given us a piece of information, that it says function update close bracket is wrong. And when we look at it in detail, this one's a really simple one to fix. It says this is expected near to this. And if we look here, we can see straight away that we've got a bracket but we need a second bracket. So this is going to be a pretty straightforward fix. So we're going to go straight back into Pico8 here. We can go back to our code and we can fix this one because we can put the bracket in place. Hurrah, let's try running it again. Oh dear, another error. Now this one's a slightly different one. It tells us again the same sorts of pieces of information. So we have a look at it and it says line seven, tab zero, so we know where it is. And again, it gives us the line. And it says t equals t plus 1, and then there's a at symbol there. And it says there's an unexpected symbol near this particular shape. Okay, So again, when we look at this piece of code here, it's wrong. This thing should be gone. So this is going to be another nice fix. We can just go back in. Let's clear all that um, gubbins off the screen. We can go back in, and we can remove that. So we can press escape and run. Oh another error. When will they stop? So let's have a quick look. This is possibly the most common error you're going to see, especially when you start programming, because what tends to happen when you start programming is you get lazy about your functions and about your if statements and about your loops, and you forget a vital word, this word. And if you haven't put that word somewhere after you've opened a function or opened an if statement or done something, you will get unclosed function as your error. So if we have a look at saying line two, so we're just gonna have to have a look at line two and see if we've got an end. That's all we're looking for. So we go back into the code and we can see function end if no end. So we need to put the end in. We put the end in and come back and run it. It's great, that one's fixed, Ugh, but we've got another error. Now this is a bit more tr tricky to work out here. This is saying, attempt to call global find. Okay, it's telling us it's line five, it's telling us it's tab naught, okay. But it's trying to find this global called find. What it's looking for basically is a function. We've called a function here, we've said f equals find and it's a function. Okay, these brackets, that's what this is indicating here. And this is saying, look, it can't find it. It's attempting to call it, but it's a nil value. In other words, it doesn't exist. So there's something wrong here. This particular piece of code is looking for a function that doesn't exist, or it's looking for a variable, or, or there's something missing when we try and run this. So what we're gonna do is come back to our code over here so that we can have a look. Now, in this instance, there's a couple of things we could do, but what we could do is we could either make sure that the function find actually exists, remembering our end, otherwise we'll get an unclosed function error. 
So we could have it like this, and if we run this, I'm just going to clear the screen to get some of this rubbish off, and we run it, we can see that we're onto a new error. So we've fixed that previous error. This new one is an interesting one. This is another common one that tends to crop up. It says here we're attempting to perform arithmetic, that is we're trying to do some sort of maths, on global t, okay, but it can't do it. This is quite a subtle error in a sense. We're saying that the value of t is going to be whatever the value of t was plus 1. So in a sense that's a really simple and obvious counter. We just take t and we increment it by 1. The problem is we haven't already set t. If we go back to our code and have a look at what's going on, look in here. We've got t equals t plus 1. But what does t initially mean? When the first time this loop runs, it's got no value for t. And so the program's saying, well, that's great. I want to add 1. But what on earth am I adding 1 to? It doesn't exist. So the way to fix this is to make sure that up here, we make sure we put a value for t before we even start. So up here, we're going to go t equals naught. OK. And now the whole thing should work. It should run. We've got t equals naught. And every time, t is going to be t plus 1. So if I run this now, what we should see is a screen cleared and the number t rolling at the top left of the screen. So we run it and everything's running correctly. So that's how to debug some Pico 8 um, errors. The most common one, as I say, is when this happens and you run it and you get unclosed function. And I can't stress enough that unclosed function is one of the most common errors that's going to crop up and it's because you haven't put in an end. I would say that's the most likely error you're going to see when you start doing things. In all other cases, all you've got to do is look which line, which tab, here, and what is the actual error saying? Is it an unclosed function? Have we got a problem with a variable? Are we missing some brackets? Are we trying to um, use a variable that's not yet been declared? There are all sorts of bits and pieces, and this is nowhere near as bad as you might imagine. This particular message is your friend, and it will tell you how to fix the program if it's gone wrong. These are much easier to diagnose than errors where the program doesn't work the way you want it to work. So be thankful that you're seeing an error message because this really does help. Happy programming.